Looks like our delivery from FWIP came in. We got three more full boxes of stone in there. And you might be wondering, hmm, that was a while ago. Yes. So this episode is going to be a little different from the usual ones. In fact, this is going to be very out of sequence. For those of you who like to watch this stuff in order and pay attention to, like, what tools I've got in my hotbar and how many levels I have and what's in my inventory, this has been recorded basically just after I've done the frog light deals with Fwip and Mythical Sausage. But this video is going to come out way later than that because I'm going to be going and building something which is part of somebody else's story. And this is going to happen quite frequently throughout this series. I'm going to be building stuff that other people are going to discover, but you're not going to see me building it until after that story has played out for them because it's pretty important that I don't end up spoiling things and that it isn't part of the story that I went there and made that. And part of my mission statement for this series, as you guys remember, is building stuff that's details, that's part of the world, that's already stuff that should have been here before we all started the individual journeys that we are on and it doesn't really make any sense for me to have physically gone there and built that, so I want to avoid spoiling that stuff ahead of time for people who are going to watch, for example, Joey Graceffa's series, which is what we're going to be attending to today. And the dripstone here is actually going to come in really useful because I need that for what I'm about to build. So I'm going to throw all of the stone back into my ender chest, and then I'm going to grab a couple of other supplies. I've been out mining a bunch of calcite from a distant mountain biome, and not the one that's immediately outside of my front door, Joel. But I'm also going to need to bring, let's say, a couple of stacks of diorite, Right, we'll need a decent amount of tough wherever I've left that. Oh, looks like I still do have some in my ender chest. Well, that's okay. We'll definitely bring that with us. I'm also going to need some blocks of raw gold, and we'll probably go and collect a few more of those before we do anything else here. And because I've already smelted a lot of the gold that I mined from near my base, it's time to head out to a place I know there will be some gold. This is the distant Stony Peaks biome that I got all of my calcite from instead of mining it from somewhere directly next to somebody's base. Joel. And just over the ridge is this enormous Badlands biome, which is, once again, not Jimmy's Badlands. <laughs> and if we dip into the stone layers, we can be expected to find some gold pretty quickly. So I'm just going to grab a bit more raw gold and then we'll head over to the build site for today's project. And so this right here is the area that I've been preparing for our build, because Joey wanted a skeleton pirate's hideout. And there's pretty much only one way I know of making a skeleton pirate's hideout, and that is to create a giant skull. I kind of wanted this thing to look a little bit terrifying, so I've been building it in creative for the last week or so, and I've been using a couple of tools to do that. I designed the entirety of the outside of the skull here kind of freehand, correcting a few things as I went. And it's not exactly the right proportions for a human skull, but then are these human skeletons? Like, that's the curious thing about it. But the back half, I ended up learning a bit more about MC Edit and editing in a sphere and, and just kind of cutting it off at the back there. So what you have on the inside is effectively a pretty large cavern that we could fit some kind of dungeon structure into. Luckily that stone trade with Fwip has given me all of the materials I need. There's a little bit of mud around the inside of that, there's some tough and a bit of coal ore and stuff like that, but Realistically, most of this is just going to be stone, andesite, and the calcite for the teeth, along with, of course, one gold tooth, which is why we've been out in the mesa in the first place. If you're a diligent watcher of Empires, you've probably already seen this in Joey's video, but I hope you'll have fun watching it come together. So without further ado, let's get into a time lapse.
So with the exterior done, I've lit the interior up for now. I'm probably going to change the lighting in here a little bit later on, but it prevents creepers from falling on me and damaging the build, although there's still a couple of them hiding up here in the rafters. And I've started working on the layout of this place, which is going to be quite tricky. It's quite a large space in here, but there's a lot we can do that will fit in. And I wanted to make this place feel a little bit more like a pirate's palace of sorts. I don't know. We can fit some really cool details in here, starting, of course, with these walls. The docks down here have got to feel a little bit more opulent, I want to say. They've got to feel kind of like the pirates are flexing a little bit, which is why I'm using deep slate coal around here. It's not as rare as people think it is, to be quite honest. And we got some gilded blackstone in there as well that I scavenged from the first few bastions I raided. And, of course, chiseled nether brick, which was only added a few versions ago, so it's kind of an underrated block that a lot of people don't know about. You can also get cracked nether brick now, and I was thinking about incorporating some of that but I think it works really well with still keeping the jungle feel of having mangrove wood around here but then some of the darker materials in here in a real kind of checkerboard of patterns so we're going to extend that all the way along the front here we're going to have a staircase up here and I'm going to put some skeletons out here in boats so that when Pirate Joe rows on in here, he's going to have a couple of archers to deal with, and maybe we'll position some skeletons up there that can fire down on him as he's trying to find a way up. Of course, one of the difficult things about doing anything like this in Minecraft is that he could always just camp out there in the teeth and pick them off from a distance with a bow, which is entirely fine. Like, I don't want to design these experiences so that they can only be solved one way unless we're really getting into, like, dungeoneering and puzzles and that kind of stuff. But this is going to be more of an action experience. There's going to be a couple of puzzle elements to it further up, but I think for now at least we've got the foundations of something pretty cool. I need to grab a bunch more materials though because despite taking down all of that jungle wood, I moved that back to my base. I kind of want to get a few jungle wood pieces in here for the remainder of the docks and then we'll work on using the flat ground up there. We'll probably flatten that out. We'll use as much of the natural terrain as possible to give this some elevation and we'll kind of come up with a walkway that you can get up to and then from there I think it's going to come out into the roof. There are going to be a few sections up here in which maybe some of the more dangerous challenges lie, but maybe the prize is going to be up there and the whole thing will be basically ascend the tower and claim the prize at the top of it. That allows us to fit a little bit of parkour in here as well, and I think we can do something cool with that later. I also need to grab a little bit more raw gold just so I can fill in the rest of this tooth because it looks like it's got, I don't know, like a, a composite filling in there. Once again, these pirates are going to be flexing and you can't flex with a gold tooth that's hollow in the middle, right? Okay, enough talking. You get the general idea. Let's crack on with the build. So a little bit of time has passed, a little bit more work has been done. I'm just starting to sketch out ideas for the interior here. I'm really happy with this wall section so far. And what I'm thinking is going to happen is that Pirate Joe is probably going to come in here, is probably going to have to fight off a couple of skeletons here at the docks, but will maybe think to dock his boat somewhere around here. And I might try and shore up that wall a little bit to make sure he doesn't try and go for one of the other bits on the sides here. But once he's fought those, there's a couple of chest boats around here, which he might not worry about checking right away. But if he does, he's going to come in here and he's going to find a couple of shovels, a stone shovel, a gold shovel, maybe here and there, some pretty basic ones, but something that is going to be surrounded by other loot so that the shovels are at least a little bit disguised. But the shovels are actually going to be the key to solving a couple of puzzles in here. So as we come around here, maybe there will be skeletons kind of hidden underneath this section up here so that He's going to have some stuff firing down on him. Maybe it'll just be, uh, you know, a walkway of sorts. But once you come up here and run along to this side, you get to this little divot at the top of this rampart section of wall. And it is here that he's going to find the first campfire. And the cool thing about campfires is that they have two different block states. They are lit or they are unlit. And that means we can detect whether a campfire is lit or unlit and whether that changes by using an observer underneath. I haven't got that in place right now because I'm still not sure quite how the redstone it needs to be wired up. But my thinking is that these campfires, when they are doused using a shovel or maybe using a bucket of water, if he wants to do it that way, can activate certain things elsewhere in this build. Whether they, you know, activate certain lights that maybe light the way up to what the objective is of the overall area, or potentially they could even be you know, things that activate certain ledges. Maybe they push them out with pistons so that a parkour section becomes easier. So if Pirate Joe figures out the way this is going to work, do I not have silk touch on my axe? I guess I don't. Well, there we go. Campfire lost there then. But if he goes around and extinguishes different campfires around here, it can lead to elements of the parkour being a little bit easier or potentially lead to other types of treasures. You know, and a section could open up in the wall here to indicate, you know, there's a treasure behind a, a locked door, a piston door or 
or something like that behind there. I like that idea. I think we're going to roll with that. But right now I have to go and grab a bunch more materials for the stuff I want to build around here. And I've also got a live stream to do. So I'm going to head off and pretend that I'm not doing any of this right now. And we'll have to come back to all of this a little later. So I've been working on this project for a couple of days now, and a lot has changed. Uh, the outside is still looking fantastic, I think that's going to be perfect, and inside I've managed to put together a whole bunch of scenery which is going to largely set the stage for Pirate Joe to raid the Bandit hideout. I do have a couple of skeletons already in the boats over here, so I'm probably going to try and avoid them as best I can. Their line of sight is yeah, something to be reckoned with, and they're going to be able to shoot at you basically the entire time you're running around here unless you end up dealing with them first. So I think it kind of gives you incentive to check out the loot chests that are in the boats. The chest boats are going to be really good for this. Got to take care of some of these drowned in the process because we don't really want them interfering and getting in the boats, which they've done a couple of times actually. But there's going to be a few chests and stuff here on the docks so that, you know, you can imagine stuff being loaded in and out of boats there. We might put a bit of, like, loose loot inside of there, but nothing too spectacular. Once you go up the stairs over there, I've tried my best to make it so that you can't really parkour your way up to the higher levels and you kind of have to follow the intended route. Obviously, he could bring blocks and peel her up if he wanted to. That's kind of up to him, really. But if I duck past these skeletons and try and avoid getting shot too many times with arrows, there we go, just one to the backside, I guess. And that's the second one. Okay, so you get up to this part here where I'm going to have to deal with a couple of areas that are poorly lit because I don't want creepers ruining the experience either, you get to this point here. And at this point, you kind of reach a wall. There's obviously some stairs up here. There's some stairs in the floor. But it seems like they've fallen down here or something is preventing them from creating a path upwards. And it's clear that the path continues from there. So once again, we turn to this mechanic with the campfires. I've decided that this one here is going to activate this staircase, basically. So hopefully Pirate Joe takes the hints, douses the campfire, and is going to be able to walk on up here. And from this point, it becomes a bit more about freer exploration. Over here on the left, we have a tower, which is currently where I'm storing all of my shulker boxes and various supplies. We have a little joke, the employee of the month here. I thought that was kind of funny since I have these skeleton skulls, and I figured having skeleton skulls around here as a bunch of skeleton pirates feels a little bit weird, but we'll do something with that a little later. Here we've got some cannons. I'm really happy with this black stone cannon because it's got the aperture at the front is so wide because it's all stairs. So I think that'd be kind of cool. We've got a couple of smaller cannons backing it up to either side. Over here we have another little campsite and it's here that our second campfire is going to be extinguished and that's going to create ledges on this back wall that will allow him to get up to the higher level of the cavern here because right now that sheer wall is preventing you from going any further and there isn't really a place that you can climb up to it. I've made sure that especially up here in this tower there aren't any ledges that he can hop to these barrels don't lead to anything that's kind of too high and you know you could maybe parkour your way up there if you were especially skilled. There's a couple of spots up there that you might be able to parkour to, but generally speaking, that's not the idea. And I think going around the cavern the intended way is possibly going to be easier. He can jump from here to this kind of raised canopy kind of thing, so maybe there'll be a way to get up from that. But over here we have this weird little chapel. I decided to have like a little bit of like buildings as though this skull base had almost been either created around this chapel when it was here on the shore of the ocean or alternatively that one of these had been built inside of here and then the skeleton pirates have taken it over. There's a few barrels and whatnot around here but there's also a target practice range. Makes sense, most skeletons are archers so we might as well have one of those in here and I've decided that there are going to be mob heads on each of these but the one with the skeleton is the one that he has to hit to reveal a secret because hitting that anywhere opens up the door to this tower which has a pretty rudimentary piston door set up inside of there. And in here we're going to have a couple of secrets. We're going to have a way up here which is where he'll be able to get up to onto this tower, up onto the deck of this pretty hastily thrown together ship. Actually, I would redesign this if I had more time, honestly. But this is going to lead to a kind of winch where one of Pirate Joe's crew members is going to be held captive down there. He actually specified that he wanted that to happen as part of this experience that he rescues a villager who's part of his crew. So we'll have a retextured villager in there and be contained in some sort of cage that he can harmlessly drop into the water there and hopefully he's dealt with any mobs that are around so that he can just row that villager out to safety. But once again, from here, you could just about 
somehow get up onto the side of the cavern, but that's if you found your way up here onto this tower thanks to the firing range. So that's a pretty decent puzzle solve. I wouldn't be too mad if he did that instead of dousing that campfire and creating the ledges at the back. Down here in the tower, I would like to create a little secret room using the oldest trick in the book. A couple of fence gates right here, open those up, add a painting on the side of it, which will probably have to box off the sides here to make sure it's one of the tall paintings. There we go, we'll keep it as that one. We may as well have that one there, and that's got a scaffold in front of it, so it's nice and easy to step up into here. There's a couple of chests and a barrel. We'll put a little bit of loot in here. I think some of the gilded blackstone might be fun as loot. We'll also throw in a couple of other bits and pieces that I've got on me. We might have a couple of other paintings in here as decoys, but I like the idea that the pirates have been like art thieves at some point as well. Maybe they've stolen these from some particularly rich merchant ships or something like that. And if you take a look at the frame around this painting, it actually matches that mangrove wood color quite well. But anyway, most of these do need resetting manually. The idea is that he's going to come through here once, but it's not the kind of door that you can necessarily reset. So we'll see how that ends up working out for us. I need to reset the stairs down here as well, because those don't end up retracting back into the floor when you relight the campfire. Once again, pretty rudimentary system all around, but it's only really designed to be used once. My next stage is to do a bit more set dressing around here. I think I'm going to go back and get some more mud blocks since those have been really nice to swap out for the grass here. We're going to keep some of the grass since this is a jungle environment and it makes sense that there is a lot of greenery around. Not this kind of greenery though and I think we're going to spend a little bit more time doing the upper level of the cave around here. But I don't mind taking out these creepers because I'm running a little low on gunpowder myself and I would like to leave a couple of explosives around here as part of the challenge. The other thing that I'm incredibly happy about that is easier to see from here is I've got a little banner up there in the skeleton's, uh, I guess, brow ridge up there, and that's because I wanted to create a map to this place. The lodestone and the compass that I brought with me are actually going to lead to a treasure chest which the skeleton pirates will have buried along with a map to this area, and then Pirate Joe should be able to find this place. But the cool thing about the map, if I've got it down here somewhere, is that whenever you build something this large, you always hope and pray or you plan ahead in advance, I suppose, that it's in the center of a map when you want to map the thing. And if I take a look at this map, which is a brand new map, it's not been altered in terms of scale or anything, it has the skull there in its entirety, which I'm very happy about. And it also, if you take a look at that in the center there, has a skull emoji as the marker. Now, it looks kind of weird because it creates a transparent background for it, but th there is a certain set of Unicode emojis that you can have as text in Minecraft. And so I copy pasted that one into an anvil, renamed that banner, and then hit the banner with the map. And from there, if it wasn't really obvious that this was a giant skull, the skull emoji kind of gives gives it away a little bit. I like that a lot. I think it's a, a neat little touch to add some flavor to this whole thing. So I'm going to reset a couple of the puzzles. I'm going to relight this fire down here. We're going to put the stairs back in place because these are all just regular pistons. I'm going to do a bit more decorative work, clarify what the objective is up here towards the top of the skull, and then I think we're going to have to do a bit of work moving some mobs in here, which might be the hardest part, but if we put them in boats or if we name tag them, they should stay persistent and not despawn. There's still a lot of work to do, so <laughs> wish me luck, and I'll see you guys on the other side. So at this point, we are approaching completion with this project, and I'm pretty happy with it so far. I'm at the point where we're putting in the finishing touches. I want to get a couple of other details in here. I want to get some lore in here, and I want to get the mobs in here. Now, I'm going to do a villager first, because Pirate Joe has told me that he wants a villager trapped in here somewhere. He knows some of the details of this, but he doesn't know exactly what I've built or where I'm building it, or the scale that we're working with here, so hopefully all of this is going to be a big surprise. So the villager's going to go there, and somewhere around here I believe there's going to be a couple of tools stashed. Now, the way I want him to get to those is by parkouring his way up to this thing dangling from the ceiling, and then there's going to be another platform nearby that's going to have that stuff stored in it. There is also over here on the right hand side going to be like a message somewhere from the skeleton pirate leader who I believe is called Skeletron, right? So we're going to have some kind of thing saying, oh, I can't believe Pirate Joe is still alive. And, you know, if you find him, return him to me alive. And then, you know, Joey can do whatever he wants with that in terms of his story in future. But uh, around here, we're going to have a few chests hidden in some secret spots. And I'm kind of excited about those. I've got a bunch of loot that I brought here in this bundle and if he finds all of the different 
like chests and storage things, a lot of them are going to have the more common stuff in there, like the iron ore, maybe a couple of diamonds scattered around, and then some of it is going to have the more valuable stuff like ancient debris and echo shards, stuff that feels a little bit more unique, and maybe that full diamond block is going to be up there, potentially higher up, maybe even stored with the tools so that there's a little bit more loot in there than just one item. But I kind of like that. Only after I've got this whole thing complete am I going to open up a portal to the nether, and we're going to try and get a couple of skeletons in from a soul sand valley, just so we can guarantee that they're the ones spawning there. And I'm also going to try and get some wither skeletons in here if I can locate a nearby fortress, because obviously there are going to be some tougher enemies in here, and I feel like wither skeletons count as an upgraded form of skeleton, I guess. This section here is the fun part. So this campfire, when we extinguish it, activates a piston mechanism hidden in the back wall that's going to push those three stairs out. And so there's a ladder here, which is pretty obviously not part of any of the decorations that we have here. That is intended so that you can jump up onto it. And then there's a couple of tricky corner jumps and this one where you really have to have the right sort of momentum leaving the block. Otherwise you fall like I just did. I'm honestly pretty bad at parkour. So testing these things is not exactly a demonstration of what the most able parkour player is going to be capable of. But then this last section here, you shoot that target, it extends that piston there, and then this block becomes extended permanently because that's just a regular piston, not a sticky piston. We could end up turning that into a sticky piston so the jump has to be timed and that could make it a little bit more difficult. And I did end up going and grinding more slime between clips, so I might do that actually. I think that gives this jump a little bit of extra skill involved. But from up here, you can't really see it. But from down here on this block there, you'll notice there's actually a target block inside of there. And if you shoot that through this half block gap, which is actually kind of difficult to do and relies a little bit on the arrow's randomness, that exposes a chest down here, which is where we're going to be hiding some of the more valuable stuff. Like I'm thinking that the a few of the diamonds might be scattered in here along with one of the pieces of ancient debris. And we may be, may be going to leave the echo shard for a different chest. We'll see. A little bit of the deep slate diamond and copper ore can go in there. We have to have a little bit of junk in here as well. And I figured we could probably put a couple of blocks of scaffolding in there. So if he gets hold of that, that, then maybe he gets a slightly easier way up to this upper area. So you could scaffold up, you can maybe even at a pinch collect up the remaining blocks of scaffolding I've left around here and then you have six blocks worth of scaffolding to get up a little higher. The other kind of fun thing about this is that these campfires are actually providing a bit of mob proofing for the surrounding area because of the light they emit. So when he extinguishes the campfires, he's actually going to make this area open to mob spawning which could potentially make the dungeon a little bit more dangerous. Anyway, once he gets up here it's like a bit of this wall has fallen in which means there are stairs that he can climb up, there's a walkway that leads around the side like so, and then once he's up on top of the roof of this section here, there's a pretty easy jump over to this crane, which is going to lead to another jump that's going to lead out towards where the stuff is stashed. And if he ends up exploring over this way, I'm going to have maybe a couple of raised platforms that can be another parkour thing up to there. There's going to be a lectern up there with a book that's got a message from the skeleton pirate, and maybe a couple of other loot chests and barrels will be stashed up there as well. So what's really left about this is the set dressing. I <laughs> kind of want to get rid of some of the creepers up here, so maybe we'll throw some glow lichen up amongst the moss there, but I want to have a bit more moss dangling from the ceiling as though this area has been long abandoned. We can maybe turn some of the stone in the uh, the kind of corners up here into mossy cobblestone as well. And I would love some stalagmites, stalactites, that kind of thing coming up from the floor and dangling from the ceiling, but we also have to make sure that those aren't easy parkour routes so that they don't end up overlapping with the scenery down here, which we're trying to keep a little bit more like gated off. But once he's up here with those campfires extinguished, potentially it's going to be darker down there, mobs might spawn and he might decide he has to make an exit through the eye sockets or something, we'll see. But really at this point in the process I need to go and consult with him about what he wants to find in here and then I can put the finishing touches to this place. I'm pretty happy with it so far though, it's come together very well. And in the meantime one of the other things I've done is lay the trail here. So in the early days of the server, back when Mythical Sausage died in the end and I had to recover all of his stuff and bring it back to the overworld, when he came to visit me he gave me a treasure map, like an actual legit buried treasure map, and so I decided I was going to keep that around in case we could do something fun with it later. And so what I'm going to do is give that to Joey. It's going to lead him to a normal Minecraft buried treasure, but I've added in a compass. But the compass is no ordinary compass. It's renamed, but it's also a lodestone compass, which is actually kind of difficult to see with the resource pack we have that limits the amount of enchantment glow our items have, but hopefully that should be pretty obvious that it leads to 
a specific place, and I've named it Skeleton Compass just so Joey gets the general idea. That compass is going to be his key to getting the map that leads him to this place. Basically, it's going to take him out to a nether portal that, in my brain, the skeleton pirates are kind of using as a drop-off cache, so all of the nether portal loot is still going to be there, but that's just north of this location. So when he turns around, finding the map inside of there, he's going to be directed in towards the front of this thing, and isn't going to risk running into it from the sides or the back or anything like that. If he gets a map to this location from there, it's going to lead him through the mouth of the river that leads directly to the front of the skull. Of course, there are a whole variety of ways in which that could go wrong, so I might be around just to steer him in the right direction if need be, but I think he'll be able to find this on his own. But even if none of this goes according to plan, at least I'll know what to do next time I put together one of these experiences for somebody else on the server. Okay, hopefully today is going to be the last day I need to work on this project. And I spent a little bit of time between clips getting a banner put together. I really like the way this one came out. It's pretty subtle from a distance, but up close you can see that there's like a little bit of ragged pirate clothing here. There's a red bandana there as well. I kind of like that. I feel like it fits the skeleton pirates pretty well. So we're going to fly a couple of pirate flags proudly from a couple of areas in here. And then I think the majority of this is more or less done. I didn't go absolutely ham on the details on this side, but I kind of like being able to see out through the face. And we're going to be facing it this way for most of this challenge anyway. Unfortunately, much as I've taken pains to keep them around, I am probably going to have to kill the skeletons that are down here just so... I can put some stuff in those chest boats, because otherwise they're going to be firing arrows left and right, they're probably going to shoot the chest boats, break the stuff, and then all the content is going to spill out. So I think it's going to be slightly easier for me to just kill these skeletons now, and then we'll probably try and get some more skeletons that are going to be around here anyway. Unfortunate though it is, I haven't name tagged them or anything, they're only persistent because they're stuck in boats. But it is in this chest boat here, which is probably going to be manned by a skeleton, that I'm putting a couple of things, including a diamond shovel. Now, some of the other shovels are obviously going to be pretty cheap, they're going to be stone or gold, or whatever, and I don't think Joey's going to be that interested in taking them. However, a diamond shovel is a little bit too good to pass up, even if it's half broken, and just hovering over this will kind of give him the hint that he needs. Oh yeah, I'm here to put out those campfires. In a previous episode, we already set up the campfire at spawn to start a thunderstorm when it's extinguished, so he at least knows how to do that, and maybe he'll get the general idea. I'll put a little bit of gold and other stuff in here as well as loot that these pirates have brought back from their escapades. Gonna do the same over here as well maybe a couple of amethyst shards for something just like a pop of color something a little different and you know what since the skeletons have dropped a few bones around here i may as well put some bones in there i'm not quite sure why they'd be bringing bones back when they're all skeletons but i don't know maybe they make more skeletons that way? You gotta watch what you say on this server, occasionally it turns out to be lore. But in the other boat we have a couple of wooden ores that I can put in here, and some iron ores, because I thought that was a funny joke. <laughs> Hopefully just loading these down with shovels is gonna give Pirate Joe the right picture. <laughs> the barrels here can also be loaded with their ill-gotten gains, I've got a couple of other bits and pieces of loot in here that I can throw in. And we can finish off this gold tooth, which... Mm, I I kind of want a rig to explode. <laughs> Either way, aside from filling a few of these barrels with a little bit more interesting loot, the only things I need to do are, one, get the cage up here that's going to have Pirate Joe's tools in, two, get the cage over here that's going to have Pirate Joe's crewmate villager in, and then finally populate this place with skeletons. Excellent. Ah, oh, he's done curing. Perfect. I just got myself the zombie doctor advancement, and we have one villager. He was just a zombie villager from a local stone shore that I brought over here in a boat, managed to get a fair bit of damage to my armor doing that, but at least he is over here. And now I've got a little walkway that's just going to drop him into that cage up there. I'll need to lure him in there with a lectern, so I'm just going to go and run off and see if I can get some supplies to throw together a bookshelf, because it's a long way back to spawn from here. Okay, we got a lectern, we'll pop this down here, we'll see if this guy becomes a librarian, we might need to let him out of the boat for that, actually. Oh, there's so many barrels around, he became a fisherman, no! <laughs> I think we might actually have to take him elsewhere and give him the lectern. Alright, let's roam all the way over here, he's lost his profession, let's see if we can get him to accept this lectern, and then maybe we'll try and stack some of the trades. <laughs> Amazing, we got a mending trading villager and he also trades bookshelves, so I can lock that in. Oh, perfect. Anyway, now he's locked into that profession, we just need to get him back there and lure him into the cage where Joey can collect him later. Villager pathfinding has never been all that great. Let's see if we can give him a bit of encouragement here. Oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. Nope, he's gone the wrong way. Oh, he might be making his way up here. He has some unfortunate pathfinding tendencies, but uh, maybe if I open this up a little bit more... He'll notice where the lectern is. It looks like we're onto a winner. And we can just give him a quick nudge and he'll go in here just... 
Dang it. And now I can't believe I have to do this, but I need to rescue him from the magma blocks. Honestly, buddy, you are far too much effort. Okay, I think at this point I should at least be able to get him out of the boat and in to the cage. Thank you goodness. <laughs> and he does have a torch in there, so nothing's going to spawn in there with him, thankfully. Now let's make sure that nothing can drop in through the top. Let's get that thing plugged up. Because at this point, I would honestly not be surprised if a zombie just went <laughs> right into this. So now let's make sure that this is all locked up. And I believe I have some fences left around here somewhere that I can attach it back to the crane. So I've returned with a couple of things. We've got the wandering trader's head, which I can put here on this target dummy. And those two aren't going to do anything, remember, but that one is going to. And I have some essence of Joey's empire, which right now is just a placeholder text thing says empire three, but that's fine. I should be able to come down here and use this on our librarian friend. And with any luck, he will transform into the villager that Joey wants him to be. Look at that. That's so cool. I can't believe he's going to find this parrot dude in here and he's going to have a mending trade already on deck. What a legend. Okay. Oh, we are just about done here. Apologies if you can hear my fan in the background. It got really warm in the UK again and I have had the hardest time connecting to the server for the last little while. If you've been following the streams and stuff, you will probably have known that this happened to me probably about a week ago when this video comes out. I don't even know. But anyway, I am getting to the point now where where I've installed a VPN so I can connect to the server, just so I can put the finishing touches in here and get a few name-tagged skeletons into the skull base. And if I free cam through the floor, I'm going to be free camming a little bit just on the count of, you know, having uh, no chance of keeping these skeletons in order once I get in here myself. Uh, there are a bunch of name tag skeletons. There's a couple here in the boats that do still have names. Uh, I decided to just give them all silly names. So they're all called things like Old Marrow and Short Stack Daniels. And Mungo Rattlebones is going to be the last one. There's a couple still walking around inside of here. But honestly, they tend to walk down a lot of the time so this guy here is the only one who stayed up on this upper level i'm going to try and get them all in place i didn't want to just have them in boats or minecarts though i wanted them to be free walking around so they're going to be attacking joey basically as soon as he arrives which is going to be pretty funny but we want one more either from the forest floor here or a cave further down where i've managed to uh unearth a few more skeletons earlier on. So here's our last skeleton. Uh, I'm going to try and lure him out through the cave entrance over here, but it is a little bit difficult to get their attention, keep their line of sight, and then like they're difficult to move around because the skeletons try and keep their distance from the player. So this has been kind of difficult, not to mention the fact that they're shooting at me constantly while they do this and <laughs> occasionally they get stuck on vines. But once this guy's back down and strafing around, he should be able to follow me and then we'll just dig a quick hole in the side of the skull over here and hopefully he should be able to follow me into that. The only advantage of the fact that the other skeletons have now cleared out of the area is that this guy shouldn't end up getting shot by the other skeletons. I've lost a bunch of name tags already, trying to move two or three skeletons in at a time. It hasn't really worked out super well, but Mungo Rattlebones is in and we can close up that gap, making sure that no more skeletons are going to arrive. Now I'm going to get out of here and stand up here just so I can show you one last thing. And you may have noticed it in the subtitles as I was running around trying to get that skeleton. You'll notice that most of them are just kind of stationary now because once we're far enough away from them, it kind of disables their AI. But in here, if Joey decides he's going to shoot the targets and ends up revealing that secret entrance over here, I moved a wither skeleton in. Uh, he should be in here somewhere. Yeah, he's kind of attached to the ladder right now, but Big Johnson, because he's a tall guy, is going to be in here guarding some of the other loot. And if Joey looks behind this painting, he's going to see a couple of loot chests in there as well. So this place is all set to go. We have another crane kind of arm here, these sort of gondola things. I figured they were probably loading stuff in via this cavity here at the nose. Maybe if they can have dropped stuff off there or something, I'm not sure, but maybe that's where they set up cannons and stuff. Anyway, I have have one last chest here and that's going to be where Joey's equipment is stored. I just need Joey to get that here to me and that should be the last touch I need to make and then this will be ready for Joey to come and visit. And I've already given him the map at this point, so he knows where this is, or he's going to be led to this place anyway. I am so excited for this to happen. I cannot wait to see Joey's reaction to this. And I hope you folks have enjoyed this little look at what it takes to make a dungeon like this. We're going to be doing more stuff like this throughout the series. In fact, I already have plans for another couple of secret episodes that I'll be visiting on people occasionally. I might take out some of the glow berries in there if I come back and 
do one last finishing touch because honestly I think it might be a little too light in there now. I kind of wanted some of the darkness to be present if you were down here at water level but you can kind of, oh, I don't know, you can kind of see the darkness of the, the cavern in that eye up there and Joey uses shaders so I'm pretty sure it's going to look fairly dark in there regardless. For now though our skeleton guards are on patrol and that's where I'm going to head off and probably wrap up this episode because goodness knows it's been a heck of a job <laughs> getting this whole episode together. I need to take down my nether portal here so that there is no evidence of me having been here in the first place. I will ignore the fact that I've stripped mine out some stone just to build the skull in the first place and I think that's where we'll leave this for today. So folks, <laughs> absolutely covered in arrows. That's going to be it from me for this behind the scenes episode of Empires. I really hope you enjoyed this and fingers crossed everything goes well for Joey's episode. Don't forget to give Joey some love as well because he's working really hard on a lot of the stuff for this series and I think it's going to pay off in a big way further down the line. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.